let's just begin to praise the lord father we thank you we praise you lord we praise you we bless your name we bless your name we give you praise we give you praise oh father god we thank you for you are worthy you are worthy you are worthy you are worthy of all praise you are worthy of all the glory you are worthy of all the honor oh master lord you are who you say you are you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords Lord, you are the one who's enthroned in the heavens above, Father God. You are from everlasting to everlasting. Yes, Lord, you are the all-powerful one, the all-knowing one, the eternal one, God, who's present everywhere, the omnipresent one. Lord, we, Lord, we bless your name, Father God. We thank you, God, that, um, Lord, you, um, you are who you say you are, Father God. And the, the, the promises that you've spoken, the word that you've spoken, Father God, it will not return to you void. And Master, we, <clears throat> we thank you for all that you've uh, Lord, spoken over our lives, Father God. We thank you for every word that was quickened to our hearts, Lord. And Master, we, we just want to thank you this uh, morning, especially for the month that has gone by into this new year. Father God, uh, one month has already passed, and we want to thank you, Lord, for this one month that has gone by. And uh, yes, Lord, we look forward expectantly, Lord, at the months that are ahead. And, and particularly, Lord, we commit this month of February into your mighty hands, Father God. We pray that, uh, Lord, not a day, day will be wasted, not an hour, not a minute will be wasted, Father God. Lord, we pray that we will invest the time wisely. Father God, your word says, uh, walk circumspectly. Uh, and uh, re redeeming the time, Lord, we, we pray that you will uh, teach us to do that, Master. Yes, Father God, we pray that you'll enable us to value, Lord, this great gift and resource that you've given us, Father God, and that we may use, Lord, uh, uh, all our abilities and gifts and everything, Father God, for your glory. Yes, Master, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands. Uh, in Jesus' match matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> So let's, um, yeah, let's begin from where we stopped last class. I think we stopped at um, Galatians, and it was um, uh, fifth chapter, or, yeah, I think the fifth chapter, the last part of it is where we stopped. Um, let me just turn there. Okay, let's uh, let's just read that last part again, and uh, and then see um, what we can uh, just to review what we saw last class. Um, let me just go to that place one second. Sorry. Okay, so this is where uh, <clears throat> immediately after. Paul asks, you know, uh, who hindered you? You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Okay, I'm reading from verse, verse 16. So Paul uh, gives some very important uh, keys or, you know, uh, important, uh, true, uh, you know, revelation to walking victoriously, like to walking in the spirit, right? So verse 16, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Okay, so this is what we saw last class. This is what we ended with. Right? So Paul saying, walk in the Spirit. 
and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And he finishes the, cha uh, the chapter also by saying the same thing. Let us also walk in the spirit. So um, the key to uh, uh, living a life or um, living a successful uh, life of not uh, giving in to the temptations of the flesh, or the lusts of the flesh, the key to that, the answer to that is to live in the spirit to be led by the spirit and uh, he lists down what are the works of the flesh uh, very clearly and compares that with what is the uh, fruit of the spirit you know, when we say fruit of the spirit what is the end result of the work of the holy spirit in our hearts what is the end result of that so he writes about that and says you know against this there is no law Right. Whereas against all the other things, well, the law says that it is it is sin, it is unlawful, right? Uh, adultery and fornication and uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, everything. Uh, but against this, the work of the spirit, which uh, which is brought about by the spirit, the end result, uh, which is brought about by the spirit in in a person's life, in a believer's life, is all the good things: love, joy, and peace. Right? Long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And against this, there is no law. Okay, and uh, and verse twenty-four is uh, you know again important for us to identify with. What does he say? He says that um, those who are Christ's, that those who belong to Jesus, those who belong to Christ, have crucified the flesh with its passions. Okay, um, so. When did this happen? It happened when we accepted him, when we received him as Lord and Savior. Because what happened is that there was there is this truth of identification, right? Just as Christ died, we in Christ, we also died. Just as he was buried, we were also buried. Just as he rose again, we were also uh, brought back to life. You know, Romans chapter 6, we, we see that very clearly. So now here, Paul writes and he says, those who are Christ have crucified the flesh. This has already happened in the past. Now, that is our identity. Now the flesh has already been crucified. Okay, but let us walk in the spirit. You know, the flesh has been crucified, The flesh, but the thing is that we need to walk in the spirit we need to be led by the spirit because there is a possibility of not being led by the spirit if we are not being led by the spirit then we will be guided by the lusts of the flesh and it's very clear there's it's either the spirit or it is the flesh okay it's very clear it's one or the other right so it's either the flesh or the spirit so but we know that the flesh is against the spirit. It says the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. So these are contrary. These are kind of opposite to, uh, to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Okay. So many times it happens in the life of a believer that one doesn't end up doing the things that one wants to do. Okay, whether it's a decision, whether it's a choice um, that one wants to make, one if one is led by the flesh, then one does not end up doing what the spirit spirit of God wants, right? And only if you're led by the spirit of God and the giving in yielded to the spirit of God, do we actually, uh, you know, uh, obey and end up doing uh, what the spirit of God wills or spirit of God desires, right? Um, let us not become conceited or proud, <clears throat> provoking or envying one another. Okay, let's look at um, chapter 6. And uh, this is the final chapter in, in Galatians. Okay, let's look at that. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering your own self, lest you also be tempted bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. 
but let each one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another for each one shall bear his own load let him okay let's look at those first five verses okay so here's an instruction so he's saying if a man is overtaken in any trespass you know that uh, which means that if a person um is has given himself over to sin you know he's is overtaken which means that uh, he has fallen uh, he is uh, um he is actually uh, given in to sin okay so now what is the uh, what is the solution what is the responsibility of the believer he's saying you who are spiritual okay now you ro- you restore that person okay so he doesn't say okay you make fun of that person or you condemn the person or you you know gossip about the person but he's saying you restore the person um obviously the other person also has to be willing you restore that person in a spirit of gentleness that restoration has to be in a spirit of gentleness okay um which means that um you know you don't do it harshly or you don't uh, there there has to be firmness we need to speak the truth in love but um you know you do it with the spirit of gentleness and considering yourself lest you also be tempted okay now many times what happens is um in the process of correcting someone or in the process of restoring someone you know we ourselves given to the temptation of the flesh right whatever is listed there maybe it's a outburst of wrath or it's anger or uh, you know dissension uh, whatever is you know sometimes those things which are listed here become you know become our expression in the process of correcting someone in the process of even restoring someone so that's why you know paul writes and he says consider yourself lest you also be tempted okay you also be tempted to you know to um, stray into the works of the flesh whether it's anger whether it's dissension right so in the act of correcting you know in the act of restoring someone you consider you let you also lest you also be uh, you know uh, be tempted you know or it could be pride even right so you consider um the other thing is also in the same very same area in which that other maybe that person has fallen um you know there is a there is a chance that the person who's actually correcting might might stray into that right he's correcting but he or she is correcting that person but uh he might he or she might stray into that so saying consider yourself lest you also be tempted okay um this is uh yeah the sixth chapter right just one second okay and that word um consider means to observe to contemplate to fix your eyes upon okay so which means um you be alert in other words okay that word scopeo which means consider um uh, be alert and uh, you observe observe your action think about your action um in correcting that person in bringing correction to that person you think about it you know am i saying anything am i doing anything which is which grieves the holy spirit okay see now it's a good thing it's a sincere thing it's an honorable thing what is it to restore a person back to how that person was right is it fallen now we want to bring in restoration and as a as a restoration means okay that person has fallen that person needs to be brought back uh, into how he or he or she was as a believer and uh, you know to maybe maybe repentance and and uh, everything that person needs to be empowered to maybe it's some kind of addiction maybe it's some kind of you know attitude whatever you know you're bringing about the change but you you observe you contemplate you think about your actions your speech 
right? Your motivation. Because if you're not careful, then you will get tempted and succumb to that temptation, given to that temptation, right? To deal with it in the flesh, right? You might lash out in anger, right? React in anger. So that person is not willing to change. You react in anger. You, know, you hit back in anger, say words in anger, or do things in, uh, you know, in a fit of rage. Um, and you know, some things become very, and it, it, it actually damages, it creates even more damage than what was there earlier, right? and breaks the relationship and so on. Right? So consider, okay. bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks himself to be something, so um, so that example of uh, bearing one another's burden, uh, you know, if someone is carrying something, responsibilities, and uh, if they are unable to do that or struggling with it, help, right? Uh, fulfill the law of Christ. Okay, and if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, uh, which means wrong perception, right? They are deceived themselves. Um, so if someone is thinking that they are something, when they are actually not that, then they are deceiving themselves. Okay. So these are some separate instructions he's giving. Um, and verse four, but let one, let each one examine his own work. Then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So there is, um, uh, you know, there is uh, uh, no comparison, right? And um, it, uh, either it's ministry or some sort of work, right? Um, so you you do it unto God, and you examine your work whether it is you know you have a you have a high standard. Right? You examine, you see, you correct whether your work is, uh, you know, uh, right, honorable, and everything is correct before God. And, um, and not really, the standard is not someone else's work. Right? And, uh, and the word which is used there for load, you know, each, one's, each one shall bear his own load. It's uh, it's the word which is used to define a backpack, you know, something like a responsibility. So it means that okay, uh, it it doesn't talk about um, uh, you know, it doesn't talk, talk about letting go of someone's responsibility. Okay, each one, the old English says, each one shall bear his own burden. Okay, and that uh, it, it talks about responsibility it talks about uh, maybe some kind of uh, uh, roles that person a task that person has to accomplish so each one has to carry their own they have their own responsibilities they have their own load in that sense it is like a, you know it's like a shoulder bag or a backpack that you carry and uh, so each one needs to carry his own load each one shall bear, bear his own load Okay, so no one else can do it for you, like in terms of your call, um, the responsibilities that come with it, if it's uh, something to do with, um, you know, your uh, role and the responsibilities that come with it, the tasks that one needs to do. Now, you cannot put it off on someone else, right? Um, you need to carry that to completion. So each one shall carry his own load, okay? Then uh, let's look at verse six onwards. Okay. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life and let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart therefore as we have opportunity let us do good to all especially to those who are of the household of faith okay um 
so let's look at verse 6 he says let him who is taught the word so some practical advice right? uh, some scriptural practical advice so he's saying uh, okay uh, if you are being ministered the word someone is teaching you the word uh, then let him who is taught the word share in all good things with the one who teaches okay this person is ministering so uh, share in all good things you know maybe materially maybe uh, financially maybe you know whatever uh, you want to share to um, and, and you know that um, uh, that word that we um, share the, the, the word that we see there uh, uh, one second let me just pull that out um, is um, is is actually koinonia right share in all good things so saying you you have fellowship with that person you know when someone is sharing you have fellowship in the sense so to share to to make common right so that each one is benefited so he's saying you, know, you share you distribute you be a partner in with that person right? enter into fellowship with the person who is um, teaching the word who is spiritually ministering okay um so then that is that is one instruction then the other thing he says is do not be deceived god is not mocked okay so don't uh, don't be deceived by by this particular thing that i'm you know that he's going to explain now so do not be deceived god is not mocked now what does mocking mean mocking is to make fun of right so don't be deceived god cannot be made fun of or god is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap now that's a very basic principle right uh, you know if it's gardening or agriculture what you sow is what you reap right so it's it's fairly simple right? but if you're going to be sowing certain seeds of a certain kind of plant what you will reap what will grow is also the same thing that you expected you know if it's a going to be uh, you know a, a certain plant like tomatoes that is what you will reap you will reap tomatoes right you will not reap any other thing so god is not mocked you know what, whatever you're sowing is what you're going to reap so don't deceive yourself thinking hey i can sow something and reap something else right in other words what he means is i don't be deceived you know, thinking that i'll do this and uh, the outcome will be something else okay the result will be different or if i if i do this right now uh, i can expect something else as a result or sometimes it can be even you know i will do this i will expect no result you know maybe nothing will happen okay maybe i'm i'm doing this you know what is that whatever task that you're doing okay maybe it is uh, or even not doing right you know that you need you need to maybe uh, uh you know you know that you need to uh spend time in worship or prayer spend time in the word meditate on the word and if you don't do that to expect spiritual growth and maturity is a wrong expectation you know you're deceiving yourself thinking that okay um you know time will just go by and i'm not going to be studying the word i'm not going to be you know meditating or reading i'm i'm going to keep off the word and still expect spiritual growth and maturity is is a wrong expectation that right? you are just being deceived so he's saying you know whatever you sow you will reap for he who was was eight he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption if he's going to be doing something uh, which is of a fleshly appetite maybe satisfying his fleshly appetite and and whatever is the desire of the flesh or maybe he's not doing something okay he knows what what is the right thing to do he's not doing something that is also sowing to the flesh right you know that you need to um, you know maybe i don't know care, you know take take care of yourself take care of your health maybe and take care of your whatever responsibilities are there now if 
for example, if you don't do that, then, well, to expect some other result is deception. Right? You will reap corruption. Okay, so, so it's talking about the lifestyle of even, you know, if you can compare it to maybe even a lifestyle of sin. So, for example, if uh, a person is living a lifestyle of sin, you know, whatever is listed in uh, the previous chapter, what we read, right? Um, you know, if a person is going to live like that, now that is sowing to the flesh, right? They're continually living such a life that is sowing to the flesh. Now, of the flesh, they will reap corruption. You know, they, and the end of it will be corruption. Something that will destroy, something that will bring an end, right? Uh, so that's uh, something that will decay. Okay, perishable. It is. Uh, it is uh, destruction. So that is what it means. It's not. It's not a good thing, right? It is. Uh, it will destroy something. You will bring on destruction. You will bring on something that is, you know, decaying. It is opposite of life itself, right? Now that is that will what we happen, but but if you sow to the spirit, then you will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Okay, so that's the that's the thing. But if you are intentionally going to be doing certain actions, if you are going to be you know uh, you know intentionally doing something which is sowing, which is opposite of what you did to the you know which is opposite of sowing to the flesh then you will of the spirit reap everlasting life okay so um so intentionally which means that you know intentionally if you're going to be sowing you are going to reap okay which is again a very powerful uh, principle spiritually for us and if you're going to you know pursue god if you're going to spend time, if you're going to, you know, take it up, you know, even ministry wise, if you're going to be, you know, if you're going to be investing your time, if you're going to be doing things, certain actions, it will have, there will be a time of reaping. Okay, that's what it means, right? So whatever you sow, you will reap. There will be a time of reaping now. That is an encouragement as well. Hey, if I'm going to be sowing to the spirit, if I'm going to be doing this, you know, whether personally or maybe if it's for a, another person, maybe it's for another group, then there will be reaping. There will be a time of reaping, right? But if it's going to be of the flesh or something that is, you know, uh, that that, that, is, uh, that is that uh, is not spirit led. That is fleshly. If I'm going, if my actions, if my words, if my whatever I'm going to do is going to be that in that manner, then then there will be a reaping also. What will be the reaping? What will be the outcome? It will be corruption. It will be destruction. Like it will be something that decays. So there's no escaping that. So he's saying, God is not mocked. Do not be deceived. Okay. Um, and then verse 9, let us not grow weary while doing good. So for in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So the thing is, why do we lose heart when there is time? And there's a time, you know, gap between sowing and reaping. Okay, we know that, you know, we can't sow today and expect to reap the next day. Yeah, no, it's not, every farmer knows that that's not how it works. Right. There is, there's going to be a time of sowing and nurturing and watering and, and all that. And then, you know, it grows and there is, a, you know, there is this protection that needs to happen. And then there is a time of reaping. So, well, don't grow weary. Don't grow. Don't become tired um, while doing good. Don't become weary. Don't become weak. Uh, don't become exhausted, right? So what does that mean? That means don't don't give up hope, don't give up faith, don't be discouraged, right? Don't become tired, but continue on, continue on. Because what are we doing? When you, especially you know, if it's ministry, if it is uh, you know, it's personal time, we are actually sowing, right? And with the sowing, you 
you must understand that there will be a reaping even though there is time in between there is this sowing and there is this time and then there is this you know whatever happens in that time is growing and all that there will be a reaping right so he's saying um you know for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart therefore as we have opportunity let us do good to all especially to those who are of the household of faith let us do good to all and particularly specifically to those who are of the household of faith for the believers um uh, whom we know and who are of the household of faith okay okay the last section see with what large letters i have written to you with my own hand as any as desire to make a good showing in the flesh these would compel you to be circumcised only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of christ for not even those who are circumcised keep the law but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh but god forbid that i should boast except in the cross of our lord jesus christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and i to the world for in christ jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation and as many as walk according to this rule peace and mercy be upon them and upon the israel of god from now on let no one trouble me for i bear in my body the marks of the lord jesus brethren the grace of our lord jesus christ be with your spirit amen okay so you saying see what with what large letters i have written to you with my own hand um so you know we know that paul sometimes used uh, you know somebody to or got the help of somebody to write his letters like he would dictate and someone would write the letter right and uh, and that person would also uh you know write about themselves towards the end of the letter and now you see that um in some of the um some of the epistles right we've seen that so here he's he's writing it himself and uh, so he says um uh, see i've written to you what what large letters i've written to you see so sometimes uh, like theologians have said okay maybe he had some eye problem because of which he is writing you know large letters because he says you know earlier you know when i came to you first uh, i i preached to you because of uh, infirmity and then i uh, preached to you first because of uh, infirmity and because of weakness and uh, he says you know but the way you responded you would have actually given you given me your own eyes so you know people have some people have connect, connected that and to say that okay maybe he had some eye problem but you know that's uh, speculation you know that's just a guess guess work uh, it's not we don't know right and uh, it doesn't seem to be that way right so so he's saying in verse 12 you know as many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh right in the flesh they want to you know they want to display and and uh, you know tell people that hey this person is also following the law keeping the law keeping the things of the law so these would compel you to be circumcised he's coming back to the false brethren which he started off with it's coming back to their teachings and their practices so he's saying you know um if it's something to do with the a showing of the flesh which means it's not of any benefit spiritually okay so these would compel you these would force you right put pressure on you to be circumcised only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of christ so in the sense like when people uh, you know the, the jews were of course persecuting persecuting the uh, the believers persecuting the church of god paul himself at one point did that so now he's saying you know when when somebody is let's say circumcised and saying you know i keep the law i keep all the jewish customs then the perse- persecution would stop obviously you know they would not be persecuted uh, you know because they they will realize that hey this man is also this person is also keeping the law um keeping the tradition stripping the customs so you know so he's saying that you know these do that so that they may 
not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Whereas Paul was very, very strong in uh, in denouncing the, you know, he's saying that we have been delivered from the empty ways of our forefathers, right? So there's all these empty traditions and everything. We have been delivered from it and we've been released into the king, this uh, this spirit of life uh, or the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Okay, so um, so this is what they, they want you to do so that they might boast in your flesh. They might, you know, look at you and then boast. Look at, look how this person is following and, you know, I, I brought them, I taught them and they might boast in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast. Okay, so saying, I'm not going to boast. In other words, God forbid that I should boast except... I will boast in one thing, except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would, I would gladly boast only about that, what, which means about the cross, what the Lord Jesus did for me on the cross, what he accomplished for me and for the entire humanity on the cross. Now, that is something I would gladly boast about. Nothing else, not about see how many churches I planted, see how many you know uh, believers I brought into the kingdom of God, see how many people got saved. Nothing. You know, I would boast gladly in the cross of Christ Jesus, by whom the world has been crucified to me. The world is crucified. Uh, he talks about how we have been. Uh, how the flesh has been crucified. Right? Those who are Christ have crucified the their flesh. You know that's that is what we see in um, crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Now the flesh has certain passions and desires, and those who are Christ have crucified that very thing. Um, so here it says, the, you know, I have been uh, uh, the that I should both accept. God forbid that I should both accept in the cross of our Lord Jesus by whom. The world has been crucified to me. The world has been crucified. The world has been put to death right, to me. And I, to the world, I have died. Right? So, and the life that I live, I live by faith in the Christ Jesus as a new creation. So, I have been, I have been put to death as well. Right? For in Christ Jesus... Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. Okay, that's verse verse 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. Okay, has any power or uh, is capable of bringing about any uh, you know, any power or uh, ability uh, or strength, right? this whole thing of circumcision or uh, uncircumcision, it does not change anything but a new creation. Now, that is what it's about. How we have become a new creation in Christ, now that is what will bring about strength. That is what will bring about change. You know, similarly, he, he says one another, uh, I'm sorry, he says another place, right? Uh, where... Um, if we turn to chapter three, right, in um, in words, towards the end of chapter three, for as many as you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither male nor slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Right. So, so this is saying, you know, there's no difference. All these differences are broken down. But you are one in Christ Jesus. You are heirs of Christ. Okay. Same way. Now, in Christ Jesus, you know, all these Jews and non-Jews, and you know, the, whether you're circumcised or not circumcised. Now, that does not matter. What matters? What is of importance is: Are you a new? creation which means have you you know experienced the, the cross of christ the power of the cross of christ lord jesus work on the cross have you experiences now that is what will is is it uh, you know you that you becoming becoming a new creation now that is what matters
matters. Okay. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. Okay. As many, um, no, as many people, if they're going to be receiving this truth and revelation, and as they walk, as they live their life according to this, peace and mercy be upon them and the Israel of God, meaning the, you know, the, the people of God, peace and mercy be upon them as they walk with this understanding, as they walk with this truth. Okay, from, from now on, let no one trouble me. You know, from now on, let no one trouble me for bear, I, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Now, this is, you know, because people were talking about circumcision and circumcision. He's saying, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. He was talking about, you know, the kind of difficulties, the kind of punishments that he endured, all the stripes, all the... Um, you know, difficulties and uh, you know all the whippings and everything that he has endured for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of ministering the gospel. Okay, so uh, so he's uh, he's he's referring to that, and that word, you know, mark, meaning something that is cut, something that is uh, you know something that is punched. Um, so it's um, it's it's like you know, some inscription even, okay, some cut or some something that is or something that is cut. In so he's saying, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. You know, this for the sake of Christ, all this has happened. Like right? whether the beatings or uh, whippings or everything, you know, this for the sake of Christ has happened. And these are the marks. These are this is proof. I, that I belong to Jesus and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing the works of Jesus. So please don't trouble me about circumcision and uncircumcision anymore. Right? He's saying, let no one trouble me for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, with your spirit. Okay? And, and that's how uh, he ends that chapter. Okay, so, so Galatians, when we see, we see it's a, it's a wonderful book, wonderful epistle that Paul has written. And we see that he is in somewhere in Macedonia when he wrote this. Um, and uh, he wrote it primarily to correct the church, to warn the church, to alert the church that they were actually turning away from the true gospel. And they were going back to a form of Judaism to keep the law and to keep the Jewish customs and traditions, which they were actually delivered from. Okay, so th this is actually not a Jewish uh, people. These are you know non-Jewish people, but they were uh, because of these Jewish uh, brethren. Uh, they were actually being pulled into that right? to keep the customs, to keep the laws, in addition to accepting Christ. Right? So Paul is. Uh, telling them, and he starts by, you know, chapter 1, chapter 2, we, we read that, he's talking about his own uh, life and testimony, how he, how he came to Christ, and in doing so, he's saying, when I met the apostles, when I, you know, and, he, and he, we get, a, you know, a clarity on how long he spent in which place, and when he actually started his ministry, all that we get, you know, it, we see that about 17 years had passed after which he had started the ministry. And uh, I mean, ministry, the way he traveled, but he was anyway preaching and teaching the gospel and how he received the gospel, how he checked with the apostles you know, uh, about what he was preaching. And, and he also mentions, you know, they didn't compel me for even uh, Titus being a Greek, he was uncircumcised, but he was also not compelled by the apostles. So what are you talking about? Right? The ones who walked with Jesus did not compel Titus even to be, uh, you know, to be circumcised and nothing was mentioned. So, so he's, you know, he's, and then he, he also goes on to talk about how did you, uh, how did you receive Christ? How did you receive the Holy Spirit? And, you know, all these miracles and everything supernatural that happens, does it happen by the hearing of the law or by the 
work of faith, um, the work of the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on to talk about Abraham and and how was Abraham blessed, right? Uh, and the law, when when did the law come? Like how how was Abraham declared righteous? It was before the law, right? It was by faith, right? So by faith you are made righteous, and you are the seed of Abraham, and you are you know if you are the seed of Abraham, then you are heir or heirs of God and co heirs with Christ. And and uh, you know he he mentions all that, and uh, uh, and then goes on to talk about um, you know uh, and further you know everything that he shares you know about the bond woman which is uh, uh, about the two covenants and uh, how one son was born uh, because of uh, you know. Uh, uh, because of bondage, um, and the other one was the son of promise, and everything to compare and to say that, you know, you have liberty in Christ. And chapter 5 says, you know, stand firm in the freedom, stand firm in the liberty by which Christ has made you free. And, and of course, chapter end of chapter 5 and chapter 6, we see that he's exhorting, encouraging the believers, walk in the spirit, because if you're going back to the law, you know it. You are actually walking according to the flesh, and you know the flesh is against the work of the spirit. It will not be. It will not take care of all those cravings and everything. But if you walk in the spirit, then it will be a victorious walk. It will be a victorious life because you can actually uh, put to death. Right? You will not fulfill the uh, lusts of the flesh. And then he goes on to say all that and ends the chapter, right? So, um, so we've come to the end of it. So we'll take a break. And uh, when we come back, we will start with uh, the book of Ephesians. Okay, so we'll take a small break.